one of the major issues that students face after interview is 214B. You go for yeah. your interview, at the end of the day, you do everything all right, and the consular will give you 214B, which is trying to say that you, you don't have the intention or the ties back to your home country. So yeah. how do we prove ties to home country as students, as F1 students? What, what are the consulates looking for in terms of proving ties to our home country? That's a very good question. Um, I, you know, usually when we talk about, let's, let's clear the doubt first before we go to some of the things. Usually when we talk about proof of ties, people are like, oh, property. <laughs> uh, people talk about fixed assets. And you have a fixed asset that you can use to show that that fixed asset will tie you back to your country and because of that you would come in. I don't necessarily think so because the consular also knows that you can sell it, right? You can sell it if you get to the U.S. and, you know, liquidate it into cash and use it and decide to stay, right? So I think what they are looking for is a story, right? Essentially, they are looking for somebody who has a story that connects him or her to his country um, so much that the person is interested more in investing in this country in terms of their knowledge and whatever, more in, um, uh, you know, more so that the person is going to return to his country to come and live. And the person's intention is not to live in the United States. I think that's primarily what they are looking for. There are different layers to it, but primarily they are looking for somebody who has a story that says more about his interest in living in his home country or investing in his own, his own country or, you know, his, his interest in his home country more than uh, his interest in living abroad, in living in the United States. Some of the things that you can speak about would be things like a job, right? But then again, it's always good to say that all of these factors that we will be talking about, and I'm sure you also say a lot of things, are sort of interconnected. None of it by itself sh sort of shows strong ties enough, right? It's sort of interconnected. Yeah. So um, we'll say like a job. A job is okay. So if you have a job appointment from a previous employer or a current employer stating their interest in you and their interest in the skill that you're going to be acquiring after your program, and or if, even if they can prove that they have already hired you and they only need you to go and train and then come back and study most of the time, you know, that would make sense. So a job is decent. Um, a bigger goal that is beyond yourself, but includes your country and your community, right? So like a goal to do this. And I, while that is imaginary, remember that I'm saying that none of these factors stand alone. They go hand in hand, right? So for example, for somebody whose father is in the U.S., mother is in the U.S., senior brother is in the U.S., and the person is also trying to come to the U.S., if the person goes there and say, oh, my goal is to return back to my country, it's like it's conflicting, right? It's conflicting, not because when you have somebody in the U.S., you know, you sort of tie yourself to be denied, no. But it's because your family ties are stronger in the U.S. The only thing that is tying you to your country in that case is your imaginary goal, which can change, right? So my point is, they are sort of interconnected because for somebody who is coming to the U.S. and says, oh, I have a goal, I have a dream to set up a business, to do something something like that for my government, for whatever, whatever. And then the other questions will be, who, where are your parents? Where are your siblings? Where have you worked? And all of that is home country, home country, home country, home country. It makes more sense for the person to be approved or for the, for the consulate to believe that in that case, the person is going to come back to the country. So... While um, all these factors like a job, like a, you know, a goal, like family, um, and some of those things help, they don't stand alone in that they have to be connected in such a way that they would tell a much more stronger story. What else are you thinking about? Yeah, so I think when it's come to proving ties to home country, as you said, there's no one way about it. And that is one of the key areas that consoles are, are attentive to. And there are some people who go for the interview, they come and they were like, uh, oh, when I went, they didn't ask me any, any, plan, any question about my plans after school and, and all that. They ask you, when they ask you, yeah. why did you choose this school? They are assessing your plans after school. It's in it. Yeah, it's, it's in it. it right? yeah. So for me, I always tell people that if you were a student, then connect your ties to your home country 
upgrade your career. Whether you have a job or you are working or you hope to have a job, it's a career, right? So there are lots of people like myself, when we were coming, we didn't have a job or an employment offer. But we have to mm-hmm. show to the consular that whatever we are going to study will become relevant in our home country. And we have plans to bring it into our home country to achieve something. Mm-hmm. I always say, give this example. There, there's this lady uh, who went for her visa interview and she was come to do political science. She is from the northern mm-hmm. region. I, I told you the last time. And mm-hmm. when she went, she explained that she is passionate about political science because in her community, like even in Ghana, women are not, if you look at the ratio of men and women in, in, in the politics, you could see that wow. women yeah. are underrepresented. So she's yeah. motivated to be the, the, the one of the few or the only woman in her community to be in the Ghanaian political space. And okay. ultimately, her hope is that this course will prepare her to either enter into politics and also help encourage young ladies in her community who are only uh, uh, victims of teenage pregnancy and, 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 and issues of, of uh, child abuse and, 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 and whatever. So you could see that yeah. this person has a specific career goal that is connected yes. to what he's going to study. That has a benefit yes. in his country. That is enough yeah. ties. That, that is, is in, very when, strong. Yes, when we, when we talk about ties to home country, we are not saying that uh, after school, the, uh, like something should bring you back. But we are trying to explain to the consular that after school, you have plans of coming back. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I, 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 am, I am thinking in, in this way that there are some people who have family ties here, like your, your, your mm-hmm. wife. It's good to have a family tie. It's good to, mm-hmm. to see your wife is, is, is the one uh, mm-hmm. behind uh, your... Oh, sorry, how do I put it? I, I'm confused. Like your wife, is, right. your wife is at home and then you are going, right? And, yes. and because of your wife... Yes, you are you going to to use, yes your wife, you are going to... That is not a strong reason. What I mean is that... By itself, you, yes. Yes, you cannot use... The mere fact that you have a wife and you have children home as a strong ties to your home country because mm-hmm. as an F1 visa, your wife and children qualify for F2. qualify. They qualify yeah, to they join qualify. in the U- United States. But if were if it were to be a B1, B2 visa, you can use your wife, you can use your children as a tie. As, as mm-hmm. a tie. You can use your 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 assets, your land and whatever as a tie. So when it comes I remember to, mm-hmm. Yeah, when it comes to F1, F1, I would say always connected with your academic goal. And most of the time, some of these issues are found in our statement of purpose. You state in your statement of purpose that you want to come and study a specific course in this department in order to to bring that idea to solve an issue in Ghana. Mm -hmm. That is how you should prove yourself when it comes to uh, proving ties to your home country. I was going to add to the example that you gave that um, there was another lady that I was also uh, guiding and uh, she was going to study criminal justice with a focus in forensic sciences um, as like uh, a way of um, like enhancing the the criminal justice system in, I think she's from Ghana, in Ghana, right? And so when I asked her what her goals are, she was like, you know, in Ghana, the, for, the technology, forensic science as a technology has, is not very, you know, advanced. It's, I, I, don't, I don't even know people, if people use it. But she was like, I'm passionate about that. And I want, to, I'm, I want to go and study that in the U.S. as a woman and come back with that idea, with that knowledge, with, you know, with the technology and with the systems to include forensic science um, as, a, as an investigative tool that will enhance the criminal justice system. In Ghana, I was like, "Wow, this is this makes more sense to me than just telling me that you have a boyfriend who you are pregnant for or something like that in, in your home country." Um, but like we said, um, all of these responses go hand in hand. So while you're thinking about your career, which is your primary thing, your your goal, your dream, your career ambition, and all of that, also be thinking about some of the underlining questions like your family, like your um, uh, your siblings, your travel history, and all all of those things sort of signal to a good extent where your strengths and your passions really lie. So, so think about that also in combination.